What's going on, everybody? We just keep on winning, man. Knicks beat the Nets 111 to 107. Getting it done at MSG. It is start really well for the Knicks. Came out slow off of a back to back. First quarter was ugly. Really picked it up in this in the second half. OJ Ananobi, I love what I did. I love what he, you know, provided in the second half. First half, he wasn't he wasn't looking like himself. But the Nets, like, they try to come in here and punk us, right? They try to come in here and try to get underneath our skin and then punk us. I absolutely love what OG Ananobi did in that fourth quarter, sticking up for his teammates. And and look, who's that? Watford on the Nets? He was, look, man, the clean, sleep against, clean sweep against the Brooklyn Nets this season. That's 4-0 and against the Brooklyn Nets this season. Unserious franchise they got going on over there man they tried coming in here gave gave us a good run but ultimately we came out with a victory a lot of stuff to talk about tonight man standings update um i believe you know the knicks clinch home court in the first round they clinch home court in the first round of the playoffs let's go let's do it hit some of these comments man appreciate every single one of you joining me here tonight and giving me the time joel says love to win og stood up for brunson yeah, man, love the win OG stood up for Brunson, man. Nets try to – Cam Thomas, look, he had a good game tonight. Try to kind of – that was that was like a – look, the, the, unserious franchise. That's all I'll say about the Brooklyn Nets, man. <laughs> Lynette, good bounce back from a lousy start. First quarter, man, it was – that was probably our worst first quarter this season. I mean, we couldn't hit anything. Brunson was off, and an OB was – he was bad the first half, right? And an OB was bad. He was getting cooked by Cam Thomas, and then – it seemed like he hit that switch second half, third quarter. He came out guns a-blazing, shooting, defending. Um, absolutely great third quarter from OJ Ananobi. Couldn't miss anything in that third quarter. And obviously Brunson got it, got it, got it going there in the second half. And look, slow start, but ultimately we came out with a win. Dame, what's going on, man? Appreciate you always in here. Love the team. Camaraderie. OG and Bru OG had Brunson's back. One of our players right on the bench should have shoved Thomas and threw up their hands like, right? Like, they try to get underneath our skin to close the game. Unserious franchise. Like, come on. Like, pushes Brunson, then OG sticking up for Brunson. And you could see after OG stuck up for Brunson, you could see him and Hart kind of like laughing, laughing about it on the side. Like... <laughs> It was just funny. It was just funny. But, yeah, I lo absolutely love that from OG. And Brooklyn, man, clean sweep, man. Stay over there. Stay in Brooklyn. Stay in Brooklyn with your unserious franchise, man. 4-0 this season. Clean sweep. Don't know your direction. Don't know where you're going. Um, it is what it is at this point for them. S550, OG was about to give Cam Thomas the work after he shoved. OG's a quiet, right? He's a quiet cat. But somebody said it on, on the Knicks Nation Twitter page. He looks like he would smack somebody. Like, I've seen him in Toronto kind of get into these scuffles. He's a fierce competitor, OJ Ananobi. So, don't sleep on him. He had a bad first half, but, like, he's he's tough as nails, man. And he's he's a big dude, man. That's a big boy, man. 6'8", what? Looking like... Looking like a linebacker out there, man. He, he's not one to be messed with, and I absolutely love that because that's what we need. Heading into the playoffs, don't you love seeing stuff like that? As soon as I saw that stuff, as soon as I saw OG and Omi go up to Cam, I was like, yeah. I love seeing stuff like that. I love seeing, you know, the guys step in and, and get each other's back because, look, playoff times, is, is, is it's, it's crunch time, man. One game remaining. And if the season ended today, like Johnson said, we would be facing the 76ers, I believe. So I'll go over the standings in a bit, but it's still very much up in the air. The two seed is very much attainable. Like Bucks lose next game, we win, we get the two seed, and then we wait for that for that play in matchup. Whoever comes out of that. Um, big task. The Knicks keep rising. Nostalgic man, what's going on? Appreciate you hopping in here. Joel Nets wanna ruin our moment. Like, look, they well, 
terrible season for a terrible franchise, the Brooklyn Nets. And yes, Joel, they wanted to ruin our moment. Um, guys were laughing up, laugh, laughing it up at the end there. You know, the Nova boys. Um, but yeah, great win, man. Great win. Thunder cooking bucks with three minutes left. Got to watch that score. Yeah. Um, thank you for the update. S550. Nostalgic. Oh, man. Big task in the building. Yeah. Big task always in here. Happy Friday, guys. Lynette said Milwaukee losing tonight. We don't we don't really want that two seed. Philadelphia is no joke. Guys, pull up the standings right now, right? One game remaining. That's it. One game remaining at the box score right here. But all in all, I mean, we could talk about this game really quick, and then we can get into, you know, the, the goods, the good stuff, right? Um, look, OJ and Obi, big first, big, big second half for OJ and Obi. Sticking up for his guys. Love what I saw. Bogdanovich, I thought, you know, started off well, kind of tailed off there. Mitchell Robinson had, a, had himself a heck of a fourth quarter, man. Shout out to Big Mitch. Dominating the offensive glass. They fouled him there at the end, like the Heat did. Remember the Heat did that in the in the second round? And then Mitch knocks down two free throws, does what he does. And um as soon as he did that, I could see Mitch in the locker room saying, I'm I'm knocking these down. I'm knocking these down. He said that last year. So shout out to Mitch hitting those free throws. The Nets were doing hacka hacka Sims and hacka Mitch. Like that's how you can come. That's how you. That's your alternative to come try to get back into this game. You were up by what, like twenty in this game, and you couldn't keep that lead, and then you revert to a hack a Mitch and a hack a seventeen. They were up by seventeen in this game, and uh, whatever. But shout out to Mitch. Big fourth quarter for Mitch. Um, yeah, and then Brunson, man, Brunson really stepped up there in the in the did what he did. Like if you were to if. Watching this game, watching the first half, if you would have told me Brunson would have ended this night with 30 and 11, I would have been like, what? Are you serious? And he ended the night 30 with 11. That's how great this guy is. Off night still gave you 30 and 11 assists. Inefficient night shooting the ball. Efficient night shooting the three. 30 points. But right here is what you love to see. 11 dimes. And they're, they're beauties. He had a nice one of Dante on the baseline. They're beauties, man, and that's what you want to see from JB, and he's been awesome. He has he's on a he's on a tear, and yeah, look, great win, right? One win away from fifty wins. That'll be a huge accomplishment. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the good stuff. Let me open up the NBA standings bracket because I like the way they have their bracket set up. It changed again. What? No, they they didn't even update it. No, oh, they didn't even update it. So on to ESPN. On to ESPN. Here we go. So if the season ended today, it'll be the New York Knicks and the Pacers still, right? Hmm. So they own that tiebreaker. This is a three-way tie right here. I thought it was a 76ers, but it's a three-way tie. Pacers lost to the Cavs today, right? Tonight. Um. Yeah, 120 to 129. So... Pacers lost, lost three way tie. It's it goes to Indiana. So if it's again season ended today. It's Indiana, but the Bucks have been kind of resting people. Dame didn't play tonight. They're getting blown out according to every single one of you. So yeah, two seed is still obtainable, and then we still can face the Heat or the 76ers if that were the case. But guys, this is gonna come down to Sunday. This is going to come down to Sunday. We like I, 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 we would be honestly guessing right now. This this is so I've never I've never. I've never like when's the last time a season ended like this when it was so close. Like Knicks went tonight. They clinched the first round match. They clinched a first round home court advantage. Right. So the lowest we can finish is four because apparently if the Knicks lose on Sunday, Cavs win and then the Bucks were to lose. The Cavs have the tiebreaker because of their division. So they would jump ahead of Milwaukee, I believe. And then that's how, I don't know. My head hurts. My head hurts. But yeah, it comes down to Sunday. Oh, man. Dame says, love the comebacks. Not a fan of the slow first quarter starts. Playing catch up, not always going to work. Dame, yeah. I mean, 
it's a back to back, right? It was a back to back, but yet yet again, no excuses, right? You don't want to coming off of such a great emotional win in Boston, and then you come play a Nets team that's not really playing for anything. You kind of knew this was like coming, right? Slow start, and then ultimately, what happened? Picked it up, halftime occurred, and they were like, "All right, let's put these guys away," and they won the game. So, um. S550 says, seeing Alec Bricks on the floor hurt to watch. I really would have preferred Shake. Yeah. And Mike Breen said in the broadcast with Alec Burks that he has three young children that he's away from right now. So that are, I think they're still in Detroit. So that kind of is part of a reason why he's kind of been like not himself. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, Burks has been has been struggling and he's he was in there because McBride has been was sick tonight. So. But yeah, when McBride's back, Burks is not going to be in that rotation. Um, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, man, this this is going to come down to Sunday, guys. This is going to come down to Sunday. Um, this is this is absolutely crazy. Heat is okay, but try to avoid the red hot. We might, we might, <laughs> we want the smoke with that. Dane doesn't care about who we match up with. Dane doesn't care because Sunday hits right. Let's say Knicks win. Let's say Bucks win Sunday against the Magic. So then you're looking at Bucks two seed, Knicks three seed. Pacers, I think, play the Hawks on Sunday. So let's say they win. And let's say the Magic lose because they face the Bucks. So then if the Magic lose in that scenario... 76ers, I think, hold that tiebreaker. So if the 76ers win, they hop into the sixth seed. So then it's Knicks, 76ers in the first round. I know I kind of like blew your minds, but that's one. That's 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 just one of many scenarios. Now, if I go to what is it? The uh, standings predictor. Um. No, that's not it. There was a standings predictor that I that I used to go to. Um, that's not it either. That's not it either. But yeah, there there was a standings predictor. It probably hasn't even updated yet. So, yeah, there's there's Knicks. As long as we look, we got the home court in the first round, right? That's all that matters, right? First court, first round in Madison Square Garden, we have home court. We have our six man. We're in the garden. That's probably gonna start next. Saturday or Sunday, game one. It's probably going to be next Saturday or Sunday. One of the benefits of getting the two seed is you play one of the play-in teams and they have to play kind of like an extra game. So they'll be coming in to the garden kind of, you know, not really rested, probably like a day off when the Knicks would have four to five get days off. And I could that look, that could work against us, right? Having a bunch of days off and the team that just won in the play-in coming in and is already hot, and that could be like a Heat team. Look, it's still, it can either be the Heat, this like in a play-in, like if we were to get the two seed, facing the Heat in the first round is very is a, is a real possibility if we were to get that two seed. So I don't know what the Knicks, now that we clinched home court in the first round, I don't know if they decide to t- take a look at this game on Sunday and, and just kind of like mail it in, like, I don't know if they decide to do that because obtaining that second seed could be very valuable to the team. And the Bulls have, have kind of looked that that game doesn't really mean anything for them on Sunday either. So, but that's not in the Knicks DNA. I, I doubt they do do that, but it's still, it's still very much fluent and it's kind of crazy. And it's kind of like, like, I kind of just want to know who we face, right? I kind of just want to know who we face. Draw says we want Philly. Joel says we want Philly. S550 says not having Randall with our second scoring option hurt us, which causes the slow starts. Yeah, I, look, back to back, right? I mean, tough back to back, coming off emotional win, and and yeah, these these non Jalen Brunson minutes are still they're still going to be an issue in the playoffs. Like we're still going to be talking about it. The Knicks still have flaws. Like they're not a perfect team at all. But you know they were missing two rotational players tonight. Don't forget that Hardenstein and McBride. And all in all, we came out with the victory. We came out with the dub. So, and it's kind of like, 
this game meant something. But, you know, coming off a of back-to-back, that's why you saw that slow start. Dame saying what we've been preaching. Brunson is a superstar. Yeah, what did Mike Breen say in the broadcast that I absolutely... Um, he said... Let me just pull up the quote. He's the gift that keeps on giving, Jalen Brunson. He is the gift that keeps on giving. All right, this is from Ian Begley. Just wanted to get you guys this update really quick. So he says, Knicks win tonight and can finish second in the East if they beat Chicago on Sunday and Milwaukee loses final two games. Philly will finish sixth with win versus Brooklyn on Sunday and Orlando win versus Milwaukee. (laughs) If Milwaukee beats Orlando Sunday... New York can finish no higher than third. Uh, yeah, it's it's a mess right now, man. We still don't know what's going down at the end of the day. Like we're I would like I'm I'm trying to like guess what I think is the most likely scenario, but at the end of the day, like Dame says in the chat, we want the smoke with anybody. Like Dame says in the chat, we want that smoke with anybody. If we match up against the Heat in the first round, you know, the Knicks are going to be wanting that revenge. Not a matchup I would like, but they're going to be wanting seeking that revenge. Matchup, matchup against the Magic, we should be able to win that series. Pacers, let us be the underdog. Like TNT said, if the Pacers will beat us in the first round. Look, I don't, look, let them talk all that talk, man. Let them think we're, you know, some scrubs and we don't have that that it factor in the playoffs. I'm not, I'm not concerned about the predictions or whatnot, but. It's going to come down to Sunday. Cam, what's going on? Salute. Shaky start tonight, but the boys got it together. Really glad to see OG stand up business for Brunson. Overdue, but somebody stands up for him. Yeah. that That's a good point because Brunson has been kind of getting like, you know, the crappy end of the stick here. These last, what? It's been like a long time with the referees and being thrown on the floor. And yeah, Cam, it's about time someone actually stepped up and got into someone's face. And look, don't come in here and do that, man. Especially with the playoffs coming around. OG, man, stepping up. Who would have thought OG stepping up for JB? Absolutely love that when I saw that from OB. OG. Draw says any NBA team would be cowards to try to avoid a team for reference. Whatever team the Knicks play, we're ready. 76ers or Pacers, even the Heat. Absolutely love that, Joel. Zero tolerance bully in the chat if the Knicks is ready to compete for the championship. It shouldn't matter who they face. Seems y'all just would be satisfied with the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't care who we face. I don't I don't really care who we face either, but there's I'm like there's certain teams who I'd rather face. I mean, zero. There's certain teams who I'd rather face. Like I would rather face obviously the Magic or you know, the Pacers in the first round compared to like the 76ers or the Heat, but I see that argument. Like, I don't, like, 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 uh, Dame says in the chat, and like you said, bring it on. Cause eventually, in order to get to where we're going to get to, we got to go through every, we got to get to get through those teams too. So, but of course, you want the easiest path as possible. But right now, you're concerned that you really, you clinch home court, set in stone. That's stamped. You get home court in the first round. The first two games are in Madison Square Garden, no matter who you play. And that is a huge accomplishment. Last year, we were on the road. We started on the road, one game one. So that's a huge accomplishment. Get home court. And then Sunday, look, what what times are these games on Sunday? I think they're all at 1 o'clock, right? I think the NBA kind of did that on purpose to kind of like avoid teams to sit somebody if they know another team won or lost. So I think all these games on, on Sunday, we're going to know – Late Sunday afternoon, who we're going to play. And if the Knicks finish the two seed, and it, we're not going to know. Like, it still can come down to that play-in game with a seven and eight seed. So, if they finish number three, we'll know who we play. If they finish number two, it's still going to be like another day or two before we find out who we play in the first round. Um, But, yeah, man, I, I absolutely love this. Look, the Knicks have been doing this all season long. They've been... Battling adversity, was it tough? Was it was it easy tonight? No, none of these games are going to be easy. And came down from 17-point deficit. It looked terrible in the first first quarter. It was terrible. Like, I was like, oh, trap game. One of these trap games, back-to-backs. Guys look tired. Brunson looked tired in that first quarter. OG with, you know, one of his worst halves as a Nick. 
and then third quarter of boom. You know, lately it's it's you know these last couple of years it's been a third quarter of doom, but this year it's kind of been like a third quarter of boom, right? I mean, I think we outscored them in the third tonight. I want to say about like fifteen, and that kind of got got us back into the flow of things. Um, let me just pull up this box score. Yeah, by 17 points. We scored 30 points in that third quarter, and they scored 13. And in the, in the second quarter, we were scoring a lot, 40 to 33. So we started to get it going, only 14 points in that first quarter, which was a, which was a bad one. But, yeah, man, Um, so the Bucks did the Bucks lose? Yeah, I think the Bucks lost. Yeah, Bucks lost. So right now it's the standings. This is... This is it, man. No other changes. The only change is there's no changes, right? This stayed the same. Cleveland was a fourth seed. Magic were the fifth seed coming into tonight, and the Pacers were the sixth seed. So, you know, there's no changes. But, I mean, from five, six, and seven, it's tied up here. And then the Knicks and the... If I were to tell you on April 12th, the New York Knicks will be tied with the Milwaukee Bucks with the same record. Dealing with what they've dealt with this season. All the injuries. Randall being out. Ananobi. Mitchell Robinson. And now we're tied with the Bucks for the second seed in the Eastern Conference. It's a crazy accomplishment, man. It's a crazy accomplishment. Nets really did the cheap option by forcing Mitch to the free throw line. It was satisfying when he made them. Uh, yeah, man. Hack a Mitch, hack a, a Sims in that first half. They were trying everything. Nets, unserious franchise. It, like, is it a good like look? Miami tried it in the in the in the in the second round too. They tried it with Mitch and look, when teams revert to that, all you can do is have faith in Mitch. And he's been knocking them down. Like he's in a high pressure situation. Mitch is a pretty good free throw shooter in a high pressure situation. In a low pressure situation, that's a different story. He's, I think he's like 30 something percent this year, something crazy. But Mitch, man, stepping up and knocking down those free throws, securing the win for us. And all in all, got it done. But I like I like the way Mitch has it looked in this fourth quarter. Offensive glass, dominating, starting uh, you know, it's starting to come around. Starting to come around for Mitch. He played, I think, he played, I think, the entire fourth quarter, I believe. So starting to come around, still trying to get his win back, still trying to get, you know, back into shape. And, you know, shout out to Big Mitch tonight, man. Huge part of the victory. I've been waiting all year to get our <laughs> vengeance in the playoffs. Yeah, man, like, let's say the Knicks overtake the Bucks and get the second seed. And this play-in tournament stays the same. We would be awaiting the 76ers or the Miami Heat in the first round. And I, a part of me wants this, a part of me wants either one of them. Like obviously, I would want the Heat because I would want revenge. But but if we stay at a three seed, it'll be the Pacers. But like I said, 76ers can overtake the overtake the Pacers. And SR50 says Bucks own the tiebreaker as well against us. They do. But if we win, like I said earlier, if we win and the Bucks were to lose. I think if and Cleveland was to win, I think Cleveland, I think we kind of get screwed from the second seed, I believe, because I think Cleveland has the division. So I think they own the tiebreaker versus the Bucks. I, I, somebody told me that on Twitter. So I think Cleveland will overtake that second seed. I believe I could be wrong. I saw something like that on Twitter, but it look guys, it's still, it's still very much up in the air. Like, I wish we knew who we were playing tonight, like I do. But it's gonna come down to Sunday, and that's what makes that's what make these these games even even greater, man. Sunday's gonna be a must watch around the NBA because everyone's gonna be you know dying to see who plays who and who matches up with who. But still very much fluid. John says, "What's going on, John?" Nets dirty player was pushing Brunson on that foul. Love that OG got in the face. Yeah, John, been talking about it. Love that OG and OB got in his face, got in his grill, stood up for the dude, stood up for Brunson. 
And that's what you love to see. As soon as I saw that and I got absolutely hyped, tweeted a video about it and said, that's what New York basketball is. We're not going to get pushed around here. We're not going to get bullied. That's not us, man. That's not happening in Madison Square Garden in our home court. So OG, shout out to him. Huge second half and sticking off with JB. Absolutely love that. Got in his face, got in his grill. Knicks basketball at its finest, right? At its best. And OG Ananobi with the with the heck of a heck of a second half. Um CM says Thibs and OG for coach of the year and JB. Yeah, man. Thibs is gonna get that massive massive extension this year. Hope y'all ready. iHeart would be playing at the end of the game in the playoffs. Team can hack him. Like teams can't. I'm not thought you thinking, yeah, teams can't hack. Yeah. IR is gonna be in there in the end, and teams can't hack him like they can hack Mitch. Which is why Hartenstein was out tonight, right? And the Knicks still stuck with Mitchell Robinson coming in off the bench. So that showed, that told us, right, that they want him to be comfortable in that role. And it's going to, it's it's still in the playoffs, he's still going to have these highs and lows. It's not going to be, he's not going to get back to his dominant self, although we see it in spurts. I'm talking about Mitchell Robinson. We see it in spurts, but they want him to really, you know, have that role and really get comfortable in that role. And the way Bogdanovich has been coming in here and, and scoring the rock. And when McBride comes back, hopefully McBride can get back. Um, they just say he's sick. And then mix and match with everyone else. But our, our rotation is pretty much set, guys. It's eight men. It's eight men. Um, it's the starting five, and it's Mitch, and it's Deuce, and it's Bogdanovich. And then whoever, if somebody's in foul trouble, maybe you'll sprinkle in some. We saw Precious tonight due to Hardenstein being out. Um, but we saw Burst tonight due to Deuce being out, but it's that's it. You know, Tom Tittle is not gonna shy away from he's not gonna play like that's it, man. It's it's that's it. And and tip the ball up, man. Because in the playoffs, our starting five is probably gonna play over 40 minutes a game in the playoffs. Hardenstein's good probably gonna be in the 30s, but which is why I think they're kind of resting him now. But guys are not gonna come off the court in the playoffs, especially our big guys. So Big Taz says, I feel bad for Mikel Bridges. I don't know, man. What do you guys think of Mikel? Like, Knicks fans want Mikel, but I don't know. I just don't think he, I don't know. I just don't think he fits on this team. Like, I don't know. I just don't. Maybe it's because he's on the Nets and they're such, like, a bad team right now. And that's kind of, like, spilling over to his play. But he doesn't really, like, he's a great, he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. But I don't, I don't know. I don't I don't feel like that fits on this team. But Mikel, they they benched him in this in the in the fourth quarter. They wanted to get their guys there. But yeah, shout out to the the softies, the Brooklyn Nets, man, trying to punk us there at the end. Who was it? Watford? Trent Watford that was like mocking Mitchell Robinson at the free throw line every time he missed. Look, they have to celebrate something, right? They gotta celebrate something. I mean, it's been a long season for Brooklyn. They don't really have anything to cheer for. So they come into MSG and this was like their kind of NBA finals, right? This was their kind of their there was this was their NBA finals. Yeah, Wofford, Trent Wofford, that's his name. Trenton Wofford. Mocking Mitch at the free throw line. He had a good game too, 17 and 13. But Bridges, 24 minutes, five points from Mikel Bridges. Cam Thomas, man. Fit. Cam Thomas, isn't Cam Thomas like one of the weirdest players in the NBA? Like one night he can look really good and the next night he looks like hot garbage. And he goes, he has been going through this for, for his entire career. But shout out to OG for really shutting his water off in the second half, man. And guys, if we can get, look, OG has been coming around and Dibs has been saying that. OG has been coming around, man. Offensively, he's looking good. He's looking really good. That third quarter, he did a what? He did a step back jumper in that third quarter, mid range. That's what we were seeing in January. His offense was starting to come around, and he's starting to hit his open shots. So, and we that we need that. Like we need OG to score fifteen to twenty points in a playoff game. Like we consistently would need that. We need him to knock down his threes, and obviously around the rim, he's a great finisher. Uh, we need that, that secondary score with, you know, obviously Hart doing his thing around the paint and Dante knocking down his threes. But 
OG has really impressed me, and he's been starting to come around. And it, from from what two weeks ago, where it was up in the air, like we didn't know if OG was returning, we didn't know if Randall was returning, and it was looking bleak. But he he you know did his rehab and got back on the court, and he's look tonight sticking up for his dudes and playing well, thirty four minutes as well. So they didn't really play that much. They're still limiting his minutes. So good game from OG. Um, Joel says, can you please explain why Cleveland can screw the standings? What if the Bucks and Cavs go 49 and 33? Joel, that's what I was just talking about. So let me try to let me try to explain to you guys. I have a tweet from I think it was Nick's Muse. He um he tweeted me before the game because I said Hold on, sorry. Sorry for the dead air. All right, I said, with the win tonight, the Knicks can't finish lower than the third in the East, but that is not true. Knicks Muse says there's a three-way tie scenario with Cleveland and Milwaukee that would place us as the fourth seed. If those three teams finish with the same record, we kind of get screwed over. So if the Knicks, the Bucks, and the Cavs finish with the same record, even though we own the tiebreaker with Cleveland they would jump Milwaukee because of their division. Went up there, though I think they won their division, if I'm not mistaken. So then it would be Cleveland number two, Milwaukee, I believe, number three, and then the Knicks number four. So that in that scenario, that's kind of how we can finish number four, even with the win on Sunday, I believe. So, look, there's it. This thing is very much up in the air. But even if we finish number four, guys, right? Obviously, we want the third seed, right? But going back to the standings, let's say that scenario happens. Let's say Cleveland gets two, the Bucks get three, we get four. You're playing essentially either Orlando or Indiana, right? Because obviously what we're seeing here is the 76ers, own, the 76ers don't own the tiebreaker with Indiana. So if Indiana was to win and Orlando was to lose, then it'll be, again, Knicks-Indiana if we were to finish, if that three-way tie were to core, were, were, to, uh, were to happen. Oh, CM says Milwaukee won the division, not Cavs. I don't know because look, who owns the tiebreaker between Cleveland and Milwaukee? Do we know that? Did they clinch the division? I don't think they clinched the division yet. Uh, what is it? Clinch division is why. So, no, they didn't. So, if Cleveland was to win. And the Bucks were to lose, they did, they would win that division, the Central, and that would kind of, like, like uh, see, like um, Joel said, that would kind of push us back to the fourth seed. Because we don't own the tiebreaker with Milwaukee. So, yeah, it's still very much up in the air. I know I I'm kind of like blowing your your guys' mind right now, but it's. There's so there's still so many different scenarios that can occur. And but what we want to know is our most likely scenario, right? Who is our most likely scenario? And right now, I don't know. Like I because I, I'm predicting a win on Sunday and the Bucks against the Magic. I don't know if Dame is playing in that game. And that's in Orlando, right? So that game could be up in the air. And the Cavs. Who did the Cavs play last game of the season? The Hornets. So the Cavs are going to win. You figure. So you figure the Cavs win. Nick, but the Nick that that's if the Knicks lose. If the Knicks win, that doesn't that doesn't happen. I don't think that three way that three way tie doesn't happen if the Knicks win. That's only if the Knicks lose. Oh man, my head hurts. My head hurts. 
Um, as far as they just says, Cavs own the tiebreaker and the Bucks are one game ahead in the Central Division. Yeah. Cavs on the tiebreaker. So if they win and the Bucks were to lose and we were to lose, then that pushes the Cavs. Okay, now I get it. That pushes the Cavs to the second seed, Bucks three, Knicks four. And then obviously the four matchup plays a five matchup. And then whoever is in that five scenario. But do you really picture the Knicks losing on Sunday is my question. Big Taz says Indiana is the most likely scenario. Yeah, I mean, because if the Bucks if the Bucks beat the Magic, like if the Bucks beat the Magic, because they play the Magic, and the Pacers win, I don't know, Big Task. And then the 76ers win. 76ers own the tiebreaker over the Magic, so they would hop in the sixth seed. I think I did that right. So, but if the season ended today, like you said, it's Knicks Pacers. But there's still a lot of a lot a lot of a lot of things to a lot of things to happen, man. But what we know, it's either what I can tell you, it's either Philly, Indiana, Orlando. I don't think we're gonna play Cleveland. That's who I don't think we're going to play. So I think it's out of that three, out of that trio of the Magic, the Pacers, or the 76ers. I think it's out of that trio. I don't, I don't, I think right now the Cavs are not in the cards. I think we've avoided the Cavs in the first round because they have an easy matchup to close. We're the third team right now. So if we lose and they win, they hop us. So we're not going to play them. If we win and they win, they're not going to, we're not going to play them. So it's either the Magic Pacers or the 76ers, or we hop into that two seed and wait for that play in game, the seven, eight, whoever's in that play in game in the seven or eight. And that could be right now it's the 76ers and Heat, but that could very much be the Magic. Or, yeah, I mean, it's it's still very much up in the air. But I'm I'm gonna see if the uh, NBA.com standings update it. I don't think they've updated it yet because they have the the bracket that I like to see. Yeah, so yeah, they did update. So here's the here's the updated bracket, and it's the same. It's the same bracket. So we just gotta wait and see. At the end of the day, we just gotta wait and see. S550 says Chicago got to go hard against us just to be petty. Here's the thing. I don't think Chicago has anything to play for. They've, they're have they they're locked into where they're at right now. I don't think they can hop into eight. No, they can't. They're locked into nine. They're locked into nine. So they have the 9-10 matchup between the Hawks. It's going to be Chicago Bulls and Atlanta Hawks. And whoever wins that, you get Boston. Congratulations. <laughs> so... John says, I'll break it down easy. Knicks in playoffs, and we'll be waiting at MSG for whoever shows up, and we smack them. There we go, John. There we go, man. Let's not talk about it. Let's be about it. Whoever we're going to face, we got faith in the guys. It don't matter. First round matchup, we got home court. We coming. As long as we got number 11, I've been saying it for a while now, the MVP, Jalen Brunson, top three, top four MVP candidate. Perkins was giving him his love today in national media. Absolutely love Kendrick Perkins, man. Shout out to Kendrick. Absolutely giving Jalen Brunson his love. But as long as we got OG playing like that, home court, it don't matter, man. Let let the dominoes fall into place. It's in, you know, it's out of our hands at this point. Let the dominoes fall into place and whoever we match up with, tip the ball off because we're gonna give you we're gonna give you issues. We're gonna give you problems. No team wants to face the Knicks in the first round, especially in Madison Square Garden. That's a doghouse, man. That's somewhere you don't want to play. I'll tell you that. I've been there. Play, I'll be there this year. Game one, I'll be there. That's some that's the loudest building I've ever been in in the playoff, in a playoff atmosphere. It shakes. It's crazy. But shout out to the Knicks, getting the job done today, locking up home court. Um, and in the first round. And we just have to wait and see Sunday. 
um, we just have to wait and see. So I'll be back on Sunday. I think I'm going to push out a video tomorrow for you guys. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Tune into that. Appreciate every single one of you for hopping in here. And Sunday, we know who the Knicks play. And then after that, we will break down everything. Matchups, how we can win, how we can lose, what needs to occur in that series, everything. Everything you guys need to know in the first round, I'll bring it to you guys. But heck of a win today. Shout out to the Knicks. 50 wins is, a, is, is right there. And we're going to get there. 50 wins is right for the taking. So... Let's do it. Fakey Fake says, okay, Fakey Fake says, if Magic beat Bucks Sunday, if we win, we'll be at 50. Cavs plus Bucks 49. Cavs on tiebreaker versus Bucks. 76ers plus Orlando plus Indiana equals 47 wins. Head to head records put 76ers 5, Indiana 6, Orlando number 7. Heat will probably win play in and take 7. Yes, that's unless the that's look magic have been reeling here. I don't know what's going on in Orlando. They've been losing a lot. And if Dame plays in Orlando, that's going to be a game to watch. That's going to be the game that's going to be on my second TV is the magic and bucks game. That's good. That game is going to define a lot. And but yeah, I, I love the breakdown there. I love I love what you did there. It's 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 hurting my head, but it's it's real stats. That's that's what's gonna happen. In case you guys haven't seen it in the chat, I'll put it in. I'll put it right here. So shout out to Fakey Fake for for uh, doing that information, man. But we just gotta wait and see Sunday who we match up with. Like Dame said earlier, like I forgot who said it earlier. Don't matter. Don't matter. Just get the job done, and let's have faith in the guys, no matter what. 76ers, Pacers, Magic. Don't matter, man. Bring him home to MSG, and we'll take care of business. All right, guys, this was fun. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Anthony from Knicks Nation. I'll be on here as soon as possible. As soon as we get some more information, I'll be on. Next game, obviously, I'll be on here. Um, but tomorrow, I think, I don't know if I'll do a live stream tomorrow, but look, be on the lookout for that. Catch you guys next time. Have a good night. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Friday. One more game to 50 wins. Let's go. Peace.